What's going on, folks? CP3, a.k.a. Black Dr. Phil. Redskins lost Monday Night Football, 34-24. Post-game hot takes. It uh, came out like it did. A lot of folks was trying to tell me it was the defense fault. They didn't stop nobody. They couldn't get Philly off the field. I got to disagree. The defense played lights out first quarter. Just like we've seen through the through every game this season. But uh, Jay got out coached by a second-year coach. He didn't adjust his game plan. He kept trying to run the ball out of the three wide receiver set. Why? I have no idea. Keeps giving Chris Thomas the ball up the gut. When you got Mac Brown active, but he gets no touches. And if, he, if you're not going to give him the ball, you can at least put an offensive line, a lineman on the active roster, and he could have been in there to replace the injuries. So he's in essence wasting a position because he's not using Mac Brown. And he put his team in jeopardy when Lionel went down. And they're trying to shuffle and trying to find who to put into what spot. I'm really scratching my head about this dude. I don't know, Salvatore. I appreciate all y'all tuning in. What's up, John? What's up, Salvatore? What's up, Kevin? Matt, he, he must be in uh, Jay's doghouse. And I don't know what he did. It took him too long to get active, first of all. He shouldn't have been on the practice squad for three years. But for some reason, Jay isn't utilizing the weapons that he has. Folks was asking about where's Terrell Pryor, where's Doxon, where's Crowder. You can't continue to throw the ball all the time and think that defenses are going to let you get away with it, especially when you have an aggressive defense with a front four like they have and their defensive coordinator is known for calling zero blitzes, which is when you bring everybody. You leave the middle of the field wide open, and you hope that you get to the quarterback with the numbers game. They had five to block. They're bringing six. And this man does nothing to adjust to that. Kurt didn't even have a chance to make hot reads. You can't make a hot read when you're taking your second step on a third on a three-step drop. And you got a D-tackle already in your face. It's not going to happen. I see the same thing every week. And I keep hoping that Jay's going to see the, see the light when he has those games like the Rams game when he ran the ball 39 times on the past 33. But he won't get it through his head that this is not the arena league. You can't throw the ball all the time and think you're going to win. That's not how the NFL is. And I wish some of these reporters were asking these questions, but they don't. They let him off the hook. He talks about, I got to go watch the tape. I just sat here and predicted most of these play calls in this game, and I didn't post them on here. Said the rest of the prediction for the rest of the season, he wins between six and eight. The way they're playing right now with the injuries and the way uh, Jay is calling these games and the, the way our schedule is about to get tougher, you might be right, Max. Because I jumped out there and said 10. I thought the defense would step up well. I didn't think the offense would regress to this point with Jay's play calling. And you have to point that out. The offense was top five with Sean McVay calling plays. What is the offense at now? It's at the bottom of the league, I believe. Defense is, you know, playing well. Now, folks are throwing statistics at me, but at the beginning of the season – how bad the defense was ranked, but I said they were playing well. Rankings don't mean nothing early week one, week two. Let's wait till week seven, eight, and see where they stand. All of those folks have disappeared, but they still want to blame the defense for Jay's shortcomings. You can't keep on defending that man in this play call. You can't keep on ducking the hard questions. Yeah, Ken, right now the division is out of the out – of the, uh, out of the reach for the Skins with two division losses to Philly. They still got the Eagles twice and the Cowboys twice. We got them next Sunday with all of these injuries. 
Jay is making this game harder for this team. This team is talented. This team wants to win. This team wants to play well. But the coaching has to match that. And I believe his stubbornness and his ego is what's causing this team. Yeah, John, I want to be positive about Dallas week too. But as long as Jay Gruden is calling plays, I can't have that confidence no more. Yeah, Avery, third and one, he didn't run. Third and two, he didn't run. And he was in the shotgun in both of those plays. So what does that tell the defense? It's not going to be running. If they do, they can just send four and claw the lanes and get them short. So that means they know he was passing. And it wasn't a short pass that, you know, something quick. He trying to get five, six, seven yards and get a defense chance to adjust. Then when he does decide to do a quick pass, he telegraphs it because the defense knows that it's coming because they've been over pursuing all game. And they snuffed it out. I keep on telling folks, these coaches are out coaching Jay. They know his tendencies. They know that if you get a 10-point lean or the Redskins, Jay is going to totally abandon the run. And that's exactly what he did when the team went down two scores. He already wasn't running the ball consistently. And it's like he was just running the ball just to say, hey, I ran the ball. He wasn't using no misdirection. He wasn't using no type of imagination with those run calls. You saw what the Eagles coaching staff did with the running game. Even though they weren't getting anything, they were still doing misdirection. They were still pulling guards. They were still doing the wide receiver action. Even if the Redskins defense was holding it down. Jay didn't even do any of that. He didn't adjust at all. When are folks going to start holding him accountable and talking about just, just the players? It ain't just the players. The coaches have something to do with it, too. The players play, but the coaches have to be on top of their game, too. I hope, Greg, you say they're going to get healthy and make a run. I don't know who a new uh, head coach is. That's why I've been trying to have faith in Jay that he would turn the corner. When they gave him an extension, you know, I wasn't too happy about it, but he's the coach. The offense played well. I was hoping with them adjusting the defense and uh, addressing it and putting talent on it like they did, that the offense would still be consistent, even though we lost 2,000-yard receivers. I understand that. But you still have talent on this squad that you just have to know how to use. Yeah, John, a D4 like hell. They kept us in the first half, but Jay's offense was ineffective. Philly was shooting themselves in the foot in the first half. The first drive they had, they backed up to their four because of penalties. We got an interception. We went down and got a field goal. A field goal. Because Jay is constantly using the three wide receiver set with Jordan Reed out there trying to block a linebacker or a DN, and he's getting blown up. And folks want to throw him under the bus, but I keep reminding y'all, Jordan Reed was a quarterback going into college. He's not a good at blocking because he never really had to do it before. And he's trying to learn the NFL against the biggest, baddest, fastest athletes in the world. It's just not going to happen, so you might as well stop talking about it. That's why the three tight end formation is key. The few times he went to it, now it's Paul got a 20-yard catch on it. Didn't go to it again. The play action game can go off of it. The run game can go off of it. And you still got a wide receiver in the game, so you can use the play action. Yeah, Brendan, hopefully we can win, but it's sad that we got to hope these things. We shouldn't have to go into a, any game hoping <clears throat> that the Redskins are going to win. We should have confidence this team is going to win. Even with the talent that we have on this field right now, you don't have that confidence because you know Jay is going to find a way to screw it up either with bad play calling, bad time management, or not understanding the time of possession is key and winning any game in the NFL. The Eagles are number one in time of possession. They kept saying that. They're six and one now. I got to look and see where our numbers are, but I know we're probably not in the top half of the league because Jay wants to throw the ball. Can't go to Seattle three and four. Exactly. Seattle, we have no luck. That's what I say. Our schedule is getting tougher right now. You know what I'm saying? We started out good. Injury bug has hit us hard. Don't 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 get me wrong. But people have been stepping up, especially on defense. 
All we can do is hope the sheriff's going to be all right. They didn't call the dirty hit in the first half on him. He got rolled up on in the second half. I'm not going to say the linebacker targeted it, but it kind of looked like he leaned in toward his knee. And that goes again to why was Mac Brown active and didn't get one touch, but we had three offensive linemen inactive this game. Those are coaching questions, Jay. And I guarantee you, I just saw that he's having his press conference. I guarantee you none of those reporters are going to ask him that. Yes, yeah, say, well, I hope I pronounced that right. Tom, Thompson is the only offense, and that's becoming predictable. So teams are canning on him. If you notice, Philly was lighting him up when he got the ball because their goal was to get him out the game because they know he's the only offense that we had. And if he would have got hurt, it would have been uglier. Teams know that. He's predictable. You have screens. You have all types of different things you can do. I need somebody to ask him why he doesn't run out of the three tight end formation. Because it works. And it keeps the defense honest. If they're bringing five or six, at least you got big bodies in that you can go max protect and give Kurt the chance to change the line assignments to do that. Carson Wentz, the second-year quarterback, has more control of his offense than Kirk Cousins does. But they call him the franchise quarterback. I don't understand that. If you want to give him the keys to the franchise, give him the keys to the offense. Don't hold him back. I'm not blaming Kirk. Steve, you called to tell him what I was talking about. I'm blaming Jay for this loss, just like I blame Jay for all three of our losses. It comes down to play calling and coaching. Kurt played a good game. That interception was unfortunate. But the pressure got to him. He should have ate the ball. There was a couple of times where he should have got rid of the ball. I'm not saying he had a perfect game, but I'm not saying he cost us the game. This was a coaching game. And Jay got out coached. Our team came out ready to play, ready to execute, ready to win this game. And unfortunately, with momentum and some bad play calling and some horrible officiating, Philly was able to win this game. Yeah, prize on the field. You're going to steal his wood. Exactly. Use him as a decoy. He wasn't even on the field. I'm going to look and see how many snaps he was on the field this game. Yeah, because Jay does get out coached every week. Steve, yeah, grew. Now. But the question is, who do we replace him with, Steve? That's the on, That's the thing. We don't – I don't know who else we replace him with. I would love to see Bill Callahan get that job. But he's not a big name, so we know how the fans are and we know how, you know – the media is going to look at it about giving Bill Callahan, but I think he deserves a shot. Well, Rick, we are, well, if you had watched Sports on the Hill podcast, we, we already pretty much said that at the beginning of this season, last season, that Kurt's not going to sign here long term. He's just getting the money to get out of He wants to be praising the door wherever he goes, and he knows he's not going to get that here. He's always going to be forever linked with RG3, and there's always going to be a divide in Redskins Nation. He's not going to be uh, loving the door. He said, you'd love to see uh, Gruden get it. Man, I, I don't know what I need to see out of Gruden. I, honestly, I need to see some true coaching. Because as I say, and I repeat, as an ex-boys and girls defensive coordinator, if I can sit here and call this man plays and predict what's about to happen, what do you think an NFL defensive coordinator get to sit and watch tape all day long on the offense? Coach, I wish you would give it a play caller because – Obviously, he's not the, the guy he was in Cincinnati. Obviously, he doesn't have the A.J. Green and all the uh, weapons that he had like we had, but it's crazy. Well, I, I feel you, D. I mean, you want to keep both of them, but look at the contract Pierre got and Deshaun didn't want to be here because of whatever reason, whatever reason. And in order for the receivers that we have to, to develop, you got to get them on the field. You can't develop them if they on the bench behind two, you know, pro bowlers. So this is some of the fire we got to go through. These guys finding their way. Ryan Grant, who for some reason everybody hates, has been very effective. Crowder, I don't know if it's his hip or what it is, but he definitely hasn't been as focused as he was last year. I think he's taking a step back. And, uh, you know, Doxon, he's shown some flashes. Pryor, you know, like I said, he's still converting from, wide, from a quarterback to wide receiver. It's not that easy to do in the NFL when you're going against the biggest, baddest, best athletes in the world playing their positions. Yeah, Coach, that third and one pass and run, uh, about third and two, 
Killed me too, man. Killed me too. I, I was done after that. I was trying to get gas money and bail money to ride to Philly to go smack them. Cause, uh, and they were in shotgun. Just telegraphing what it's going to be. It's crazy. And I'm sorry I'm not getting all of y'all comments they're folding to so fast. I appreciate all y'all tuning in. <clears throat> and you say we could beat the Eagles and carry on. Well, that's not going to happen this season. We swept them two seasons in a row, and then we turn around and get swept by them. That leaves a bad taste in my mouth big time because, to me, I'm not going to say they're over, over, you know, overrated, but they're beatable if you execute and play ball. Tony, I don't know why they don't use prior. I, I'm thinking he might be in, uh, in Jay's doghouse again, man. It's crazy. Yeah, that's true, Tony. He's sad with the investment they put in Kurt, and he's leaving because of the handcuffs of Gruden. Yeah, I, I said that before, that that's one of the reasons why he probably wouldn't sign because Jay is so stuck in his ways and his ego and his, uh, you know, arrogance is allowing him to stick to what he wants to do instead of doing what's best for the team. Yeah, Steve, that's true. Yeah, the spirit of the team is definitely better. They uh, fight all the way through and they don't give up. Yeah, Jarrell, play calling is key, and Drew Rubin got to step his game up. <clears throat> Greg being optimistic, saying we'll get the second wild card. That's that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they should be in his own doghouse. <clears throat> I agree, Brandy. You know, had receivers and blame my quarterback. The combination of play calling. Like I said, Sean McVay was calling the plays last year. Offense was top rank. Jay's been calling the plays. It speaks for itself. So I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I got to get ready to work on my article, man. I got to work in the morning, so I'm going to try to get it out uh, before I go in. Appreciate y'all tuning in. You guys know, as always, Sports in the Hill podcast, DC Sports Out of Politics. Make sure y'all tune in. We'll be going Facebook Live more, get some more interactions, get some more of your opinions. Appreciate all of y'all tuning in. Yeah, Mark. It was it was some poor tackling towards the end of the game, but like I was saying before, they were playing lights out when this game started. They came ready to play. Yeah, Jarrell McVay uh, is having a ram. All the Rams are playing are playing well, you know. But he knew to get out of town with the dysfunction with Jay. Thanks, Cubs. Appreciate it. Yeah, but I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I'm gonna lay back, relax my mind for a little bit, and get this uh, article out for y'all to check out. Always uh, appreciate the love and the support. As always, tune in. We always got so much more. True Radio Network takeovers upon us. True Radio Network. Our network is better than yours. CP3 signing out. I'll holler at y'all later. Y'all be safe and be blessed tonight. <laughs>